빨리 떨어졌습니다. 로그, 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 로
And some dude named like uh, Der Sturmer also on bass, even though Galel Nacrosatomy is credited with playing bass on this album too. So I, I really think it was just like those two guys. And then like some chick did like keyboard interludes. Who fucking cares? But they put out an album. 96, 97 ish off the top of my head. It was called Mocking the Philanthropist, and it's really good. This is Shem Hem for Hash. It's kind of the breakaway song from their first demo, and it's one of the standout songs on their first full length. You can hear their uh, penchant for song architecture. They introduce a riff after that China crash, and start speeding it up kind of taking us through its paces, speed up, slow down, play it slightly different ways, it's all still the same riff. Might add a few extra notes into the chords, that kind of thing, a little bit of layering, good stuff, and then we get into what they are most well known for, which is their amazing grasp of melody. Very scornful. It's melodic, it's not sorrowful, it's very mocking. And the uh, songwriting is excellent. Just a really good sense of pacing overall. Like right there, they know how to use like full stops to emphasize the lyrics and all that kind of jazz. They get downright uh, progressive on other parts of the album. Watch what he does here with the uh, vocal arrangement after introducing that melodic riff. He's almost sort of like sing growling and that he's following the cadence of that melody in an interesting way, depending on which word he uses, chooses to lengthen. And then these nice little crashy chords, emphasizing the end of measures. Very musically adept band. They're not crazy technical, but their songwriting is excellent. Here's some cool bar chords with some very interesting semi-orchestral symbol work from uh, the Black Lord of Crucifixion, who now drums in uh, Crucifier and Masada and a whole host of other bands. It's really interesting atmospheric stuff. This is one of my favorite parts of the album. It happens right at the end of the first song, which is called The Foul Parody of the Lord Supper. Here we go, check this out. Speaking of layering and pacing, watch how they bring this like heavy ass riff in. As they tastefully misquote the Bible. That's so fucking thrashy and great. One of the best moments in black metal. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes. Here's a weird little song, Enraptured by the Fenrir Moon, the only vaguely Nordic sounding black metal song on the album. Possibly remnant influence from Lord Vlad Luciferian, who was the original drummer that they kicked out for being a wiener and adding female vocals to one of their demos when they didn't want none, motherfucker. And doing like goofy vampire stuff. It's like they're trying to smash that melodic black metal riff with absolute thrash. I don't know, I always thought that was kind of funny that that song's on there. It's actually not on uh, one of the more famous reissues of this Mocking the Philanthropist album, which was put out by Barbarian Wrath, the uh, same guys that put out all the Countess stuff. They actually took that song off for a reissue that was entitled Castrate the Redeemer, which is also a wonderful album title. I think the original version of Locking the Philanthropist was put out by like Woodcut Records or something really wacky like that. Might have been reissued by like Elegy at some point, but the easiest way to get it now is that all the Granville Isles Key albums have been reissued by Drakhar Productions run by uh, Noctu from Celestia who also puts out all the reissues of the Le Légion Noir black metal stuff from France. So he's a cool guy. I think he's friends with the Peste Noir dude and that sounds you know, that's always good. Second album comes out a couple years later. I think a few years later, actually. I want to say like 2001. There are pretty sizable time gaps between Grand Blue Isle's key albums, and within those gaps, you can often insert the Argus Line albums that were coming out at the same time with like the same group of musicians doing it. On this album, we get a more stable bassist, Demonic. 
who was from Doomstone, a band I mentioned on uh, the Argus Line episode as a King Family side project. Here's a cool little bar chord thing there. This is the Tender Hearted Manifesto, which has some epic, rolling, rollicking riffs. First song on the album. And it gets you nice and worked up. Fast forward. Logos! Last beats. Uh, for those alt right idiots out there, like, oh, finally a band that uh, doesn't hate Christians, just hates Jews. Uh, not so much. They don't like you either. Sorry, but uh, fuck off. Cause I'm not too fond of you either at this point. <clears throat> Jk. But like, maybe not really, depending on my mood. Like the little usage of bells there. And here we go. An updated take on the idea of the Grand Isles Key slow section at the end of this song. They've increased the amount of stuff going on. Those lyrics, uh, I'm not going to speak them out loud because I don't want to get hit by El Algorithmo Demonico del YouTubo. But they're not very nice. Here we go, dig this. Really interesting use of uh, palm mutes in between the melodic spikes. Heavy palm muted melodic riff. That's not a word you hear that often. And then we're off to the races as the uh, drums pick up. We still have Black Lord of Crucifixion on this album, which is awesome because he's one of my favorite drummers. You know, he might be like a bit sloppy compared to your Flo Muniez or whatever, but I think he has character. You know, it's kind of like a Fenris and Dark Throne thing. Wow, getting psychedelic with it. Be careful. Oh, damn. Well, shit. Looks like co-host uh, got knocked out by that psychedelia, but we're into an interesting trade-off between psychedelia and very primitive black metal riffs with those uh, harmonics inserted in between. Just uh, you know, word of caution, that part's pretty weird. Might mess with your head a little bit. Yeah, that song is called Fecal Paturition. That's, you know, I like how they have these like very offensive lyrics and song titles and whatnot, but they're also kind of sophisticated in how they do it. Uh, this one's called The Shittagog, speaking of sophistication. And I mostly included it on here because it has the riff that got me into GBK. That's it. Uh, made me go out and get all their stuff for obvious reasons because it's really good and you can hear the uh, seeds of what might happen in the later Argus on albums in that bit too if you listen to like Ghosts of Flossenberg off of that send forth the best you breathe split very similar use of kind of weird harmonized melodies with little dissonant touches in them the last album uh, Black Lord of Crucifixion leaves they gotta get a new vocalist they get Grimnir Votans Volk and uh, some drummer guy apparently didn't last with them very long, but he's on this album, and it has maybe like the archetypal... Archetypal cocksucker. Archetypal uh, Grand Belial's key song, On a Mule Rides the Swindler. Cool kind of evil 3-4 waltzy black metal here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Very nice uh, main riff for the song. And the way it intersects with the uh, lyrics is reminiscent perhaps of a Sabbath from the UK. Martin Valkyrie was always very particular about where his lyrics went and how they worked with the song. Oh, you're back. You good to go for when I need you to fast forward? Alright, good to hear because once we get to the end of this little uh, waltz, they're going to be doing a pretty epic bit of a time signature shift. I like that little descending figure there as the uh, chorus comes in from the verse. Alright, are you ready? Hi. Logos. 
Yeah, we're gonna hear that part again because it's cool. That happens a lot in the song. Here's the time signature change from 3 4 into 4 4. This very stomping beat. And these throbbing guitars. Uh, Galal Necrosodomy described this guitar sound as a thousand pound mosquito. And it works! Nice little double bass run there, too. But apparently, they had problems with this drummer because uh, once they kicked him out, they put out auditions and they said, uh, Nobody with a drug problem, please, thank you. That must have been dramatic. How neat is that? Something as simple as just switching the time signature and he really gives a sense of epic architecture to the song. Oh, yeah. Nice little guitar trickery at the end there. I think that's probably a pretty good overview for uh, what Grand Belial's Key is all about. If I went through like every cool thing that happened on every Grand Belial's Key album, we'd be here all day and we would have listened to every album at least. <laughs> so go and get those uh, Drakkar reissues. It's on CD and vinyl. It's nice and fancy. It's got like sh silver shiny holographic band logos on it. How neat is that? And you get like bonus covers of like G.G. Allen songs and Chaos 88 and Negative Approach and whatnot. What's not to love about that? GBK kind of split up after a Grimnir Voltons Voke unfortunately passed away, but uh, apparently Argus Lent's work on a new album and I guess Grand Belial's Key is back too in some new form, so there's something to be excited about. And with that, uh, I guess what do we gotta say to these people? Bye bye! Bye bye! Folks who are distressed. Do you feel blamed? Are you, are you mad? mad?